so absolutely excited this is christine campbell and we have a wonderful wonderful night tonight i'm going to bring on my co-host in just a minute but i'll tell you what there is nothing more exciting than it's all about the speech i've asked an incredible coach with speaking and we're talking about toastmasters that's the main core of it's all about the speech those that belong to that group but we're independents and that's what where it's all fun we're going to have a full lineup tonight but i just want to go ahead and introduce my wonderful co-host sean walker sean welcome well how you doing christine there I'm you doing go. absolutely fabulous i'll tell you this is how we do it. We start, we try to get the tweaks worked out and it works. <laughs> that's right. And that's what it's all about. It's all about just getting it done, making it happen, bringing that enthusiasm and, and, and bringing it out the best in anyone that comes on this show. And that's what we want to do. That's what we aspire to do. And that's what we're going to accomplish each and every Monday night as we do this program. I'm excited. I'm excited for the show. I'm excited to learn about the individuals that are here today. So I can't wait. Let's get started. Well, that's what I say, too. At the beginning, we have two wonderful speakers. We're going to both in, take turns introducing them. Before we do that, let's talk about five fundamentals about why when planning a speech and I'll kind of mention about why it's so important. Yes, and, and I'll go ahead and, and, and just say about the five things of an effective speech and how to capture an audience and how to reach an audience. And, and that starts with first having a title, a title that is, is, is very capturing. You want a title that is going to capture your audience with the title. You want to get them to thinking like right off the cuff. You want them to think, what is he going to talk about? How is he going to convey his message? What is his message going to be? So the title is very important. The next piece of that speech it has to be the introduction are you asking a question or are you making a statement or are you having a discussion to lure your audience in through that is the way we capture our audience because the first words that utter out of your mouth the audience is really paying attention to and it really, so you want to have something that is very appealing to capture your audience and get them glued in right away. And we do that with our introduction. And the next piece of business is the contents. It's the meat of the speech. Because once you capture the audience and you have their attention, they want to know what are you talking about? And is it in alignment with the topic and the opening discussion? because it all has to flow like a song, like a symphony, it has to flow. And then there is the fourth piece of uh, content to this whole structure of, of a great speech. And that's the summary. Did the speaker summarize what he conveyed to us in his speech? And lastly, after you summarize all that and make it all make sense, you want to close it. And in this close, you can close them with a quote, something you create, like a powerful ending, but you always want to leave your audience with something to go away from paying attention to your speech. Absolutely excellent. Absolutely excellent. And what we'll do is we will type up those five, those points that you gave into our Facebook page at nine at night and on the website, nine at night.com, just to, to let everybody get those tips. Those are wonderful tips. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my tips and what I'm going to contribute is why do you want to learn to speak well? There are so many reasons why it's absolutely phenomenal. And I'll tell you, number one is it's going to boost your confidence when you can overcome anxiety and speaking in front of others. It's a huge, huge accomplishment. The fear of public speaking, there's been statistics saying more people would rather die than speak in public. Well, we want you alive. It's you know difficult to doubt yourself when you know you can deliver speeches in public. So Monday night, nine at night, it's all about the speeches. A great uh, show to follow as well as making sure that you get involved too and do it. And other reasons are, now there's these are basically six of them. And other reasons it's going to, besides boost your confidence, your cause will be represented. What do you want to stand up for? What do you want to be seen and heard about? This is a platform that you can do it. And what better way than a practice on nine at night is one of our speakers. It'll cause your ideas to stick when you have an idea. I mean, we have many people that did it. Steve Jobs, and many others around the world that have their ideas stuck big time. Okay. And then you'll get to feel power. You feel, I mean, if you're not a control freak and you may not be, in either case, it's a huge rush to see an audience hanging on to your every word until you deliver your killer lines. You're going to hear that tonight by some experts that we're, we have on the show. It's going to help you build your leadership platform. Others will start to see you as an expert. This makes them more likely to seek you out for input and follow you on social networks. And perhaps invite and pay you to speak again. Of course, you're going to have fun. And that's when you put it out and just say, I'm going to have fun instead of fear. Okay? Replace fear with fun. And just have that attitude. It's going to be a little scary sometimes, but there's nothing like playing off the energy of an audience, experimenting with new techniques. And there is another way is just uh, there's Del Carnegie courses. There's all kinds of from Les Brown to all kinds of mentors out there. And again, there's that Toastmasters Club. Again, we're independent. We love Toastmasters and we love those that really want to try and make an effort. So I'll tell you what, it's so exciting to have you as my co-host, Sean, because you are definitely skilled in this profession and you're a coach. Let's talk about what you do to coach others. Yes, and, and, and thank you for that, Christine. Yes, I am a coach. And I've coached many in the desired skill to become professional speakers. In fact, I coach speakers now that are speaking at big venues. They're speaking. Uh, in fact, I was just on the phone today with one of my mentees, and she's getting ready to go to Connecticut to perform on a big stage in front of doctors and uh, the big pharmaceutical companies right now. So I, I'm just so proud of her right now. We started that journey of her and I coaching about three years ago and to see where she's at now, I'm talking about three years, just three years. She's competed in so many different uh, competitions. She's done big major ads for American Heart Foundation. She's been publicated in magazines. So with what I do, I help a lot of individuals break that fear of public speaking and becoming great communicators. Do you know, like you said, Christine, public speaking, not just public speaking, but communication in general is the number one fear. A lot of individuals have that fear of communicating and do they not understand that by becoming a better communicator and, 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 and letting the heads down and communicating with one another, we minimize a lot of risks and causes that happen in our day-to-day -day life. I know that since I've been a part of Toastmasters and I became, I was a talker, I was always a talker. <laughs> that was one thing. But when I came into Toastmasters and I learned how to communicate, that was a acquired skill that I now want to further train others. And since I've been trained, I'm now a DTM, which stands for Distinguished Toastmasters. That means I put Bravo. the time. 
I put the work in. I got it done. I hung in there. I didn't quit. I went all the way to the end. I finished it. And now I want to help others do the same thing. So not only did I become a communicator, but I became a leader. And leaders are the ones that lead others. So thank you for being my co-host as well. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. We, we're going to get into our speakers now. That was phenomenal. As our speakers are speaking, I'm going to be turning off my video and sound too, so that we don't flash their speech if we make a noise. That's just how it is. So right now, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to introduce our first speaker. So excited uh, to do this. Uh, he is absolutely amazing. And I can't say enough about Tyler Storer. It's basically, just a minute, I have the wrong slide up here. So I just want to make sure we represent him well, the way we want to represent. That is just so funny. So anyway, here we go. But I just absolutely love the fact, uh, we're just going to get that back up. And it's so important on what we do with with making a movement is what we're doing with nine at night where it's all about the speech and that's what we're doing tonight so we're going to go ahead and put that back up because let's see let me get make sure that's on there all right so i'm going to go ahead this is a i had him on a different slide but it's the same guy and that's all that matters here being professionals as we are, the show does go on. So with Tyler, he joined Toastmasters. Gosh, it was, it, he was here. I'm going to stop this. Okay, so he joined Toastmasters in, gosh, uh, quite a while. In 2019 is when he joined. But he's a former club awesome president. That's the Toastmaster Club in Florida. In 2020, he made it to the district championships. And get this in the international speech contest. Okay, so he's experienced. I can't wait till we see him. He's currently working on motivation strategies in both pathways, but he attended uh, Brigham Young University. He studied fitness and wellness management. He was an all-American lacrosse player. After college, he worked in the fitness industry and as well as the substance abuse and mental health industry and continued to play and coach lacrosse. So with COVID happening, he decided to leave corporate America behind, and he and his wife decided to follow a longtime dream and start their own business. So they started TKS Solutions, a photography, videography, and social media content creation and management company. And Tyler continues to work part-time in the substance abuse field as a group facilitator. We're going to learn more about that through his speech. Everybody calls him Coach T. He still coaches on different levels and just absolutely appreciate him. And his he loves spending time with his wife and his three children and loves anything outdoors. So with that, Tyler, welcome to Nine at Night. It's all about the speech. Ah, thank you, Christine, for that uh, introduction. I appreciate it. And uh, I will dive right into my speech. Um, <clears throat> good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Do you remember your very first uh, Toastmasters meeting? Do you remember how it made you feel? Think about that for a minute. Now, I'm going to take you on a journey, a Toastmasters journey, my journey. This journey begins in 1995. Here in Coral Springs, Florida, where I live, I was attending a church youth conference. I was 15 years old, and this youth conference was all about personal growth and development, and there were several workshops um, around those various topics. And the headliner was a workshop put on by a local Toastmasters club. They taught us about Toastmasters. They taught us about the art of public speaking. 
And in true Toastmasters fashion, they let us know that that evening they would be putting on a speaking contest and that it would have two categories. It would have the prepared speech competition as well as an extemporaneous speech contest, which here in Florida we call table topics. Now, I'm sure that you can imagine since many people are more afraid of death than they are public speaking, the number of raised hands by a group of 14 to 18 year olds was not very overwhelming. And never ever liking to plan anything in my life, but never shying away from a little competition, I decided to raise my hand for the uh, extemporaneous speaking contest. I remember it like it was yesterday. When the time came for the speaking contest, they took all of the speakers back to the church stage and behind the curtain. And the gentleman who had been teaching us about Toastmasters earlier that day gave us all the rules, all the timing requirements. He uh, shared with us that the stoplight with the red, yellow, and green lights that they had showed us earlier would be out in the stands front and center so we could all see it and then explain what each of the lights meant in terms of our speaking times. And then he wished everyone luck and off the prepared speakers went one by one to give the speeches that they had prepared throughout the day until the last one when that man returned and he came to those of us that were going to be participating in the extemporaneous speech contest and explained that he had a bowl and in that bowl were several pieces of folded up paper and that we would pull out one of those pieces of paper and that we had from the time it took to walk from the back of the stage to the front of the stage to prepare our speeches. I remember when it was my turn, I pulled out the little piece of paper. I opened it up as I walked to the stage and it read, tell us about your last trip to the dentist. It was an amazing stroke of luck. I had literally been to the dentist the day before, and it was a very eventful dentist trip. But that is a story for another time. In the end, I left that night with three things. One, a certificate for best uh, extemporaneous speaker. Uh, Two, a desire to know what toast had to do with public speaking and why public speakers were masters of making toast. And three, a seed. A seed had been planted. And I thought to myself, I should check out this Toastmasters thing and maybe join someday. Now, like Marty McFly and Doc Brown, let's go on a uh, journey back to the future. The year is 2019. Believe it or not, I still have that certificate for best extemporaneous speaker. Uh, I now know that Toastmasters has nothing to do with breakfast toast. And I have had someday arrive and I decide to join Toastmasters and I joined Club Awesome in Coral Springs, Florida. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did it take me 24 years to finally join? Well, I will make a long story short. Life threw me a curveball. Shortly after that Toastmaster seed was planted, I had to have surgery on my femur to remove a tumor. And I was given oxycodone for the pain. And that led me on a 10 plus year journey and battle with substance abuse. 
a uh, battle that cost me everything except for my life. And that is why I joined Toastmasters because I was now five years clean and sober. I was working in the field of substance abuse treatment and I, I desperately had this desire to have a voice, to have a voice for those like my brother-in-law who died of an overdose and no longer have one. Uh, I desperately wanted to be a voice for those who due to guilt, shame, and stigma around addiction are too afraid to reach out for help. And I joined Toastmasters to help me find that voice. And it has helped me find that voice. That is my story. What's your story? Why does it matter? Did you join Toastmasters or think about joining Toastmasters because English isn't your first language and you think it will be a great way to practice? Uh, did you join or are you thinking about joining because you gave a presentation at work and it was so bad that your boss told you you should probably look into joining something like Toastmasters so that you can present without your coworkers just cringing at your every word? Did you grow up with a stutter and were made fun of by your peers and you join Toastmasters or think about joining Toastmasters to overcome that? In Narcotics Anonymous, we have a saying that says, it works if you work it. Toastmasters works if you work it. I've seen Toastmasters work in helping people achieve those goals that I just talked about and so many more. It matters. Your story matters. Because it's not always easy to attend meetings. We're busy. We have busy lives. If you remember your story, then it makes you remember why it's worth it and you'll find the time. Just like when Christine asked me if I could speak tonight with much, with very little notice, I found the time because to me it matters. There may come a day where you're offended by somebody in Toastmasters maybe some buddies and it would be so easy to quit and not come back. But if you remember your story, your reason for being here, you'll get past it and you'll stick around and realize that it didn't matter. It matters because your story may be the very story that someone needs to hear to either become a Toastmasters or stay a Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, what is your story? We want to hear it. Somebody needs to hear it. And that's why it matters. Thank you, Christine. Back to you. Wow. Sean, come on on back. That is powerful, Tyler. Isn't that powerful, Sean? Wow. What an amazing story, Tyler. That is, that is, and 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 how you 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 found yourself in a down downward spiral, and how you pulled yourself out of that that spiral, man, that was incredible. What a powerful, powerful speech. And, and you're right. That's one of the reasons why I came to find my voice and and find my purpose in life. And, and, and I just, like I said, I could always talk, but I wanted to do something more than just talk. I wanted to be able to be able to communicate. And, and, and my story is a little different than yours, but I went to a group home and, and I spoke in front of a group home and the director, he told me, he said that um, if, if what he said, he said that I was welcome back, first of all, because I had an experience where I found my voice right there at that group home when I spoke to those kids for 45 minutes. And it was, a, it was amazing. It was like an adrenaline rush that, that I encountered. But I tell you, afterwards, the kids came and they told me stories that were, were life-changing. 
and, and, and that changed my life. So we all have a life changing story and, and that's why we all gather and that's why we all come into this community. So I, I think that what you're doing is amazing. I think you're an amazing person for stepping up and taking the courage to bring yourself out of a hole. We all go through the valley and it's one thing I learned about tough people. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. And Tyler, you're a tough person. And I thank you. Mm -hmm. thank oh, you. definitely. Bravo, bravo. In fact, when you mentioned, yeah, in fact, I have another speaking engagement for you, if you can say yes, but in advance, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> Both of you. But, um, and, and the date is October 22nd, Saturday morning. I hope you're not coaching because you'd be powerful for both of you. Uh, I am coaching, actually. <laughs> I'm going to have a recording of this then. I'll, I'll just get your permission to play that. But my son grew up stuttering. He was, until he was four years old, he was a motor mouth. He was gifted. He was passing all these tests as being very gifted. And then all of a sudden, the next day, he couldn't talk. And he's and he stuttered. He went through uh, school through tutorials to people to help him. But in high school, he wanted to be in the the film class, and he wanted to tell say the news during high school morning. And he did it without stuttering. So <laughs> that whole thing is just so amazing. And with your profession as being videographer. And that, that's what he does professionally, too. That's what he went to college for. He's in Boise, Idaho. I definitely want to put you two together. <laughs> awesome. Know. So, Tyler, do you do videography as well, right? That's I do. I do. That's my that's my main business now. I, I still uh, do some some groups uh, at a treatment center uh, a couple times a week just because there's not a lot of video and photography gigs at 9 a.m. So and I, and I love to. Uh, you know, keep with, with that community and, and helping. But uh, my main uh, job now is, is photography and, and videography and mostly sports. I do a ton of sports. Okay. So, we uh, have to get together because I have some ideas as well. And he's okay. got an incredible children's okay. program for uh, the youth that I think okay. you really love. And you guys are in the same vicinity. I'm okay. way over awesome. in Idaho. You're both in Florida, pretty close <laughs> to each other. That's right. <laughs> now, so, lastly, uh, what I'm going to do, which is yeah. funny is so people know that Christine and I hit it off because she's from a very small town in Idaho that I happen to be familiar with because my father is born and raised in one of the neighboring small towns in Idaho. And my oh, my wow. first wife, my first wife was actually from the small town in Idaho and her family is from Rigby, Idaho. So. Yeah, oh, and I met off, him. I met really... him in in Florida in Coral Springs on on a Toastmasters group. So small world, I love it. We definitely have to get you guys together, and I appreciate it, Tyler. We're going to move on I, to our next guest, and I'm going to have you introduce our next guest. Let me. Um, and and I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm gonna go dark. You. Okay, everybody, turn your video off except our speaker here so let me get our next guest on while you talk about it and yes our next speaker is a professional media host that's right he's a professional media host specializing in economics and business content he's a well-known radio and tv host in south florida Haiti, and in the Caribbean. Mr. Francois is a Fulbright Research Scholar and a junk professor at FAU. He blogs, speaks, teaches, consults, and coaches on global leadership, international relationships, and personal and organizational development. He serves on the executive board of CECOSIDA, a nonprofit organization committed to the promotion of well being and generational wealth accumulation. Please put your hands together for my guest, Roosevelt Jean Francois. Strong. 
I am so happy. I'm so elated, excited to be at nine at night. What a beautiful name. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Kirsten, to associate me with these amazing content creators tonight. I learned a lot so far, and I said to myself, what can I contribute? Of course, I would like a shout out to the introductors, to you, Sean. Thank you for the five points. Now I know if I have to make a speech, I have to think about the title, the introduction, and also to create content and to make a summary and to have a close. Those are the five points, very easy to impact people with your speech. And Christine, you hit the thread in the head when you mentioned that Public speaking builds confidence. And this is a platform. Everybody's building a platform. Yes, and platform brings power. The power of a platform. I will talk about the people's platform, but definitely I resonate with Tyler. Originally from port au prince Haiti, I came here in 2000, 2008, and my aim was to be part of the community. It was to associate myself with others. Then I joined Club Voice. It was in 2011. And from Club Voice, I found my voice. The most important part of it is that one thing I remember, you are not at Toastmasters to be good at Toastmasters. How can you take those skills, those abilities, and your talent to a bigger area? How can you serve a bigger purpose? I'm so glad that we are having content creators with us. And that gives me an opportunity to talk about the power and what can we do? What is the purpose? What can we do with platform? And today I schedule to talk about the business, the platform business model. I will share a couple of content about the platform business model. Because what is a platform? You have Amazon, Uber, Zoom, and Night at Night. Those are platforms. But who owns those platforms? Of course, we have Uber. You might be an Uber user, an Uber driver, but those who make the money, are those who own the platform. Of course, there are some perks. A platform is an opportunity today that connect people with specific products because people have needs, desires that they want to fulfill. Uber helps those who want to have a wife from one point to another. Airbnb helps those who want to have a place to stay to find a place to stay. And those models 10, 15 years ago weren't present. And those innovators have found ways to create those platforms where today billionaires have been created. But one thing that I personally associate with is to take advantage of the business platform model like Steve Jobs has done with Apple, starting with just the idea of a computer. And today, what is Apple? It's more than anything else, than your cell phone, than connection. And this is one of the trillion dollars company. What is Amazon? Amazon with Steve Jobs started selling books. And from books, now they have Amazon Web Services, and today it is everything that you need. But one thing that I discover is that those platforms, they enrich those who own them, those who have the idea at the inception. A couple of engineers that I would like to mention one of them is Owen Woodward. The other one is Chris Brady. Amazing engineers. They came with the same ideas and they said that instead of building a platform and the owners are those very few, and during COVID, NBC, 
National Broadcasting Corporation reported those who own the platforms and they name Uber, a couple of them, maybe 2,000 investors, they have made billions of dollars. Giving some perks, which is good. Facebook is a platform allowing people to share their content, but at the end, the money goes to the top. And they were asking themselves questions. How can we build a platform where the people can not only have perks to use the platform, but also they can be part of the profit? And this is what we will be talking. How can we use our own story the very same way that you are telling us, Terry? How can we use our voice and that voice becomes our business? They have built the live platform and they have had a contact with hundreds of companies. What is the selling power? They told those companies, including Amazon, Target, Chevron, if you can, if you purchase at Amazon, if you purchase at Sher a gas station, at Walmart, you are part of this platform. You pay $5 per month, that is $60 per year, and they all give you cash back. They sponsor you. Where is this money coming from? This platform sits with the owners of those companies, and they said, instead of paying with your credit card or debit card, where each merchant has to pay a fee, now those fees totalize $75 billion, $75 billion. Now we come with this idea, instead of paying with your credit card and debit cards, now you will be part of a cash community. And those two to 3% that those merchants use to pay Visa, Discover, and other credit card companies, now they give those this money back to you. And when we look at this, this industry, the credit card industry, not only they're making money over the merchants, that money is $75 billion in transaction fees. Every time now you swipe your card, you tap your card because now today, nowadays is, it is a question of tapping and they have all your information. We're talking about $75 billion every time you purchase something. And now what is the most important part of it is when you are using credit cards, if you go over limit, those companies made again other money in terms of interest and as well if you go over your limit. So the credit card companies are making billions of dollars without giving back to the community that they are servicing. Now, a couple of engineers come with an idea. They take advantage of the business platform models and they go to the community and they said, why don't we join? Why don't we link arms together and if we do that, there is an opportunity, not only that we will have part of that money, let's say 10 to $15 billion back to you, and there is an opportunity where when you share your stories within those communities, because we organize the communities in terms of pipelines, in terms of local schools where we teach people about finance, we teach people about community, about public speaking. And for the last two, three months, I've been towing the country, doing seminars, teaching people about financial literacy, why to get rid of your credit cards, why to get rid of the shackle of debt and to live a life that you've always wanted. I'm so happy to be at night at night because this platform gives us an opportunity to share our story. And my financial story, I came here, whenever you migrate, you come to a new place, whatever you have done, you, it takes you time to immerse yourself in the new community and to develop new habits. Of course, I did it in Haiti, there was no credit. You used to purchase things cash. 
until I come here. When I came here, I studied with the home, then the car, then the school, and we end up with almost million, almost a million dollars of debt. Until we understand, and we met a couple of engineers building this platform, teaching us that consumer debt is like cancer. The sooner you can get rid of consumer debt, the better you put yourself in a position to free yourself from the shackle of what the founders of this platform call the matrix. Talking about that movie we call The Matrix, where Leo said there is the blue pill, there is the red pill. And we call the financial matrix that system of debt where the where the system takes advantage of those who are indebted. How does it work? And I end up with that. This is, we are launching the consumer rebellion. What is the consumer rebellion? This is to give power to the consumer to leave and to quit, to abandon the credit community where everything you are purchasing is based on credit, now we invite you to be part of a cash community. And now where the, us as owners, we profit. And if we can share this content with others, if you do it by yourself, any credit card company can give you cash back, but they know as well that if you do it by yourself, you will spend more money when you use cards. But now, if you can teach that to 10 people, you will take advantage of their communities as well. You can multiply this by 10x, by 100x, by 1000x, and why not to join millions of people? When that young man was a business person in Wall Street, very young, in 1995, as you mentioned, Tyler, he decided at the inception of the internet to leave his job making six-figure income in Wall Street to start a startup, just selling books in the basement of his home. They spent eight years without any profit. In 2005, they launched an IPO, and from this IPO, they launched Amazon Web Services, and today, the West is history. 20 years, they have outpassed lots of companies who have been there and done that. Now, what is the big revolution coming? This is the revolution of money, the revolution where every single human being is fighting hard to live the life they want, working hard. But now how can you own a platform and be part of the biggest revolution on planet Earth? Five, 10 years from now, we'll be talking about this platform where we can gather telling our stories not only our financial stories, but where we are from, what do we do, where we host our podcast, and also where we teach people about financial issues and financial literacy. When I'm looking at the beginning of this podcast tonight, and I heard you, Sean, talk about those five principles of great public speaking, when I listened to Christian, when you spoke about public speaking brought confidence, and Tyler, when you shared your story, now what linked us together is that every single one of us has to make expenses to cover our mortgage, to pay for our cars, to go to the, to go to the supermarkets, to go to the gas station. What if we can link all the people we know on the platform, and whenever they are spending one penny or one dollar, each one of us, we got a small quantity 
passively that comes to us. And now our stories will be realigned and there will be reason where we can gather together and to live the life we want. I am excited. Thank you for this opportunity to share my financial story and the business platform model because it's all about the platform. And as you said, it's the power, power to the platform. Excellent. Oh my gosh, is that incredible. What a great teaching. Oh my gosh, Roosevelt, I'm getting goosebumps. Just phenomenal. In fact, what you said is I'm a prepper. We have a little farm in Idaho. We, When COVID happened, we had a nice big acre to get outside on. We had our eggs, our garden stuff. We had, we were self-independent and being independent with debt. Oh my gosh, that's the dream. What do you think, Sean, of this wonderful teaching? Yes, I think I, I've, I've been knowing Roosevelt for quite some time and, and Roosevelt has been one that has been strongly on uh, financial literacy. He's been doing that since he and I met, we met about six, Seven years ago, Roosevelt. Yes, Roosevelt heard. Uh, you know, speech. with uh, <laughs> when the more I lose hair, the less I can count years. <laughs> I want to bring Tyler on too. Tyler, you want to uh, join us here? Yes, he, he, I love it. We have been lifted by both of you. This is incredible. Did you have any comments on Roosevelt telling us about staying debt free is the way to, to live free? Uh, do I? A hundred percent as somebody who once paid off like 20 something thousand in credit card debt, a uh, large portion of which I, 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 I didn't know had been accumulated by uh, a, a former significant other. So uh, that was a challenge. So I'm, I'm not a huge fan of uh credit cards or, or debt or anything like that anymore. I, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, living within my means. And if, if I can pay for it, then I can get it. And if not, then it'll have to wait. So definitely uh, something that uh, I, I would have to agree with. So. And what I like with your story, Tyler, is that you make a segue with mental health. And today, if we see lots of families, the number one issue that in relationship that people have is money. Number one issue. Mm -hmm. We start well, then this one is spending money. As a matter of fact, there is a book, The Millionaire Next Door. In this book, the author mentions the number one issue, Christine, I'm not talking about you, you're not part of it is the spouse spending habits. Someone might be frugal and the other one is doing it. So that's why if, if we can take mental health, building relationship, those kind of podcasts that you go, I went to your website, Christine, kudos. I can see the diversity of content that you're putting out there. Wow. And now if we can take this and we built on it to make money, for us, it's better to have good people to have money, to have to become billionaire, to become millionaire. We will be able to do more good with more money instead of letting money go to bad hands and doing bad things. I agree. <laughs> 100%. And that's what he always brought to the table in terms of our conversations and our uh, interactions and uh, Roosevelt was actually uh, he heard me give a speech about uh, success is a pie and I, I he, he don't let me live that down but that uh, speech that I gave uh, it had Roosevelt to get up out of his bed at five o'clock in the morning to come and hear me give that speech at Club Austin and I broke down what that pie was Mm -hmm. And that pie was very, very powerful. In fact, that's one of the speeches that I aspire to travel the world with and, and share. So Roosevelt brought up another powerful thing, and, and he always says this. 
we don't just come to Toastmasters to be great at Toastmasters. We come to Toastmasters to develop to be great outside of Toastmasters. So now with all these skills and all this training I have, that's my biggest goal as a coach now to train others. And communication is the number one resource that we have. It can, you ever heard the, the, the term closed mouth, don't get fed? Uh, yes, plenty of times. Okay, or, that's or, communication. Or, or, closed or closed mouth, don't eat. Yes, you have skinny kids. Zig Ziglar said it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, Christine, look at the platform. First of all, congratulations for the graphics. Well done. This is professionally well done. And the quality of the content, outstanding. And as well, as well, this is not once what we call a fly by night. No. This is every single night. Mm -hmm. I commend, and you deserve my respect for. One, for your commitment, and second, for this ongoing building platform. Because all we need, we need alternative media. Because the mainstream media led us to one size fits all, one way to consume things, one way to go in debt. And they are financed, they are being financed by the big banks to tie the whole world. Tonight, you give me, you give Tyler, which Sean, you give us an opportunity to say mm -hmm. there is something else. There is another story that you can listen that will help you to live the life that you want. I want you to know that what you do matters and keep going. My well, excellent. And my, my passion, that's why I have it every week, day, night with a, a different topic that I feel is, is important right now is, is I love getting the word out with positive people making a difference. That's it. I've done that for years and years when my former life of radio uh, with my own talk show as a single mom. And it is something to where for some reason that just drives me. So yes, we'll definitely love to have you back, Roosevelt and Tyler. And definitely with Sean, with his youth program, I, I really feel strongly about what he's doing there. And we can make a movement with helping kids and their youth, just like it helped you, Tyler, you're a prime speaker to be in front of these kids too, with your experiences, both of you are. Roosevelt, with you coming into a, a foreign country and just, just starting and, and then look at where you're at, speaking all over the place, all over the nation. Oh my gosh, my hat is off to each of you. And, and Sean, with your, your motivation and ideas and, and reaching out too, we're all like-minded wanting to make a positive difference for others so they can be better and have their freedom too of standing for who they are. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I, I love, uh, you know, what Roosevelt talked about is, is, you know, using all these, these different platforms to, to help ourselves uh, as, as well, because um, not only that, we, we can use them for that reason, but also um, to, you know, get the messages out. Uh, you know, I, I have a, a, a following through lacrosse um, because of, of my lacrosse videography and photography. And uh, one, having that platform on social media with my Instagram and my Facebook and TikTok, um, you know, one, it's how I, I draw a lot of business because I'm able to showcase my work there. Um, but also, um, it gives me a platform uh, to talk about other things that I'm passionate about, like, um, you know, the uh, breaking the stigmas around uh, substance abuse, uh, around mental health. I actually um, have gotten involved in um, with a, uh, a, a group. It's called Goalies Matter, uh, and it's for right. um, athletes, specifically uh, goalies, because there's a high rate of suicide among uh uh, goalies especially due to the pressures of of being a goalie and and being uh in a in a team sport but it's kind of the loneliest position in team sports and and also uh another one uh 15 it's called 15 for life it was a uh, a former lacrosse player from Syracuse that uh lived here locally in Florida that uh committed suicide and mm -hmm. and it shocked uh you know family friends nobody saw it coming because he didn't talk about it um, and 15 was his, his number in college at Syracuse. And so it's, you know, his family started the foundation, uh, 15 for life, but having, you know, these, these, uh, you know, pl different platforms 
um, one has allowed me to take advantage of them to, like I said, do things like showcase my work to uh, grow my business, make money, but also it, those also give me platforms to be able to, to speak to athletes, athletes, uh, families and, 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 and share my story and let them know, like, um, you know, I, I've had people say, Hey, you, you know, you coach kids, you, you know, maybe you shouldn't put some of that out there. And I'm like, but that's who I want to know that it's okay. You know, the second that I have a parent or a, somebody that wouldn't want me around for having gone through something like that and then overcome it to be an example, uh, doesn't want me around, then that's probably a, an organization I don't want to be around because all I'm, I'm trying to do is, is, is pass on the message that it's okay to not be okay. It's yes. okay to not be perfect. It's okay to reach out for help to get better. It's all about the getting better piece, you know? Um, and so I, I you know, definitely, uh, agree with, with Roosevelt on, on, um, you know, taking advantage of some of these, these platforms to be able to one, to grow our own, uh, business, our own wealth, but to also have, have a voice. Cause we didn't, like you said, we didn't come to Toastmasters so that we could be good at Toastmasters. Right. I never came to Toastmasters thing. I want to join Toastmasters and be the best Toastmasters that there, there ever was. And, and in fact, when, when, when I, you know, went, to the, the district championships uh, for the international speech contest. It, it, it wasn't because I thought, Oh, that let me go and compete and, and be the person that wins. It was, let me share my story because the speech that I gave was largely revolving around my story of recovery. Um, Yes, and I would well. like to add one thing to what you said. If you allow me, Christine, one more yes, thing. Of course. And, and and Tyler, you were you 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 hit the nail on the head when you said that if you don't if you are not tested, you don't have a testimony. As a matter of fact, you have been in the trenches, you have been into situation for you to learn from that situation, not for you. You learn from that situation to share with others that they can learn from you. I heard your speech, Christine, telling about your personal life, being a single mom. So now other single moms can learn from that situation in your perspective. They cannot relive your life. As I usually what I'm telling people, my story, what happened to me into my life, you won't find it on Facebook. You won't find it on Google. If you if if I go to New York and my perspective on things, what happened to me, the way I, I see things, those are things that I and I only can tell you. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't been in a mess, you have no message. So that's why those who have been impacted by life, Sean with his pie, Sean with his story, and that person watching at us now, you have something that happens to you. But also we have some universal threats. We have some universal, some universal feelings. Those are fun. Those are significance, purpose that each and every human being, love, every human being has those amazing universal traits. As I said, beauty, you cannot define it. When you see it, you say, wow, it is. I totally agree. And thank you for those comments, both of you. I absolutely love it. I, I love the experiences that I had because it has uh, made me more compassionate to have more empathy. And that's what it's truly all about. That's why I love hearing everyone's stories that are on here. Every night is hearing this story. And it's beautiful to know, yes, everybody, when I had my talk show, I had worldwide CEOs or, or artists or celebrities on my show. And how did they start? Everyone had so much hardship, but they didn't give up on their dream. They didn't give up. In fact, uh, one of them was she was in the movie Bucket List. And as Beverly Todd, she was 
Norman Freeman's wife in this particular movie. And her story was she was at her last day in Chorus Hollywood, California of thinking, I'm going home. I'm turning everything in. She's quite young, but she's been there. She's a struggling actress. And she said, I'll go to one more casting call. And this was the day she was already packed and she got there and she ended up ending on the series, which kicked her off. So, I mean, all these stories are the same. So it means we went through it for a reason and we didn't stop on our dream. And that's what I think is the beauty about, especially with the four of us here together. I, I want to talk forever, but we're at the end of our hour, a little bit over, but that's okay. Sean, any last words before we head out? And, and, and yes, I think um, all of this is 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 what unites us as individuals, and it, it brings us together. And if it wouldn't have been for our failures, because I don't really call them failures, I don't look at them as failures. If it wasn't for those challenges, if it wasn't for those battles, then we wouldn't have never developed the strength and the courage to be right here. This, this evening. It took courage. I talked to Roosevelt, must have been about six o'clock. Roosevelt was right on it. And I was like, hey, let's go. And, and this is what we have to do as speakers. And Tyler I'm, too. I want to mention Tyler did too. Tyler too. I heard a story. I heard it. But this is what as 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 leaders and developing others with what I want to do with speakers as well, you got to be ready on a moment's notice because there's no telling when your opportunity is going to come again. Bingo. No telling. Bingo. When you are called to move, move. And, and, and that's, that's speaking right there. You're ready. You're always ready to go. That's professionalism. And staying consistent. When I first came to Toastmasters, and I joined Toastmasters, that was the number one thing that happened to me. I went up to do an impromptu speech and I froze for two and a half minutes. That's my story. I froze for two and a half minutes. They say the worst players make the best coaches. So I had my bumps in the road. So I know what it feels like to go through adversity. And that's how I'm able to bring what I bring to others. What I'm going to make sure we do, excellent, Sean, is make sure we have your, uh, how people can contact if you have a website or something. We'll get that on. We have a Facebook group called Nine at Night. Just like, what time are we? Nine at Night. What's our website? Nine at Night. .com, number nine. And I'm going to leave, I'm going to end on this, Christine. Yes, my program is motivating future leaders this is going to give you guys an opportunity to participate and to help out in any way you can what i want to do through this program is develop more future leaders and communicators because when the youth are able to communicate it minimizes a lot of the challenges that they face as youth and starting next Monday night, we'll have the website for this his youth group and his purpose and encourage everybody to get involved in some way. Right now, thank you, everyone. Roosevelt, Tyler, Sean, my co-host. It has been phenomenal. And definitely have, get me the info for Sean, Christine. Yes, I, I, I will definitely. And, and I'm easy. I'm Coach T on any social media platform you can think of. <laughs> Yes, I am as easy as well. You will find me at Roosevelt GF, wherever <laughs> you go. And I'm at I'm also as as a coach. It's a moment with Sean. I'm on Instagram. A moment with Sean is. Daddy. I love it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Yeah, I appreciate the shout outs. We'll get them in print too. So with that, I'm going to just uh, say we got to run and it's been incredible. And I just say, everybody stay with us for every weekday night, nine at night, Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And next Monday is going to be our next. It's all about the speech. Thank you so very much. <laughs>